Greetings, Jaguar Nation. My name is Adriana Trostler, and welcome to the first edition of the SD60. And today, I will be interviewing the SGA president, Donald Dunbar. Stay tuned. Hey, Donald. What's up? How you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm good. Great. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm Donald Dunbar, a senior major in business management from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I serve as the 2019-2020 Student Government Association president here at the Southern University A&M College, and I also serve as a student member to the Southern University System Board of Supervisors. I am a McKinley Senior High School graduate. I am a first generation college student, so you know, it's just a little bit about me. Well, you went to McKinley, huh? I went to the okay. McKinley Senior High School. Anyway, <laughs> but furthermore. She just mad she went to Scotlandville, but. I did, and proud of it. <laughs> hey, go on it. But anyway, tell me what made you want to become SGA president. Um. I would like to start off by saying, freshman year, I wasn't involved at all. I played no part in school. I went home, went to class. I was a commuter student. I wasn't involved at all. I, I didn't even attend the homecoming concert my freshman year. So that just goes to show you at the transformation that Southern University had on my life that eventually led me here in this role. So um, just to recap on what actually made me run run for SGA president was the likes of Armand Duncan and Anthony Kinney. Um, those two young men played a very great role in me inspiring to become the SGA president because the leadership styles that they possessed and you know they were for the right things and the great things and I saw you know how their legacy impacted Southern University and I wanted to play a part in that too to make sure that I had left my legacy and my imprint on Southern University on this campus so now the slogan that you use is impact issue please yes. tell me about it okay so um impact SU wasn't wasn't even supposed to exist because what I wanted to be my slogan a mentor of mine who I admire and looked up to she told me she said no this is this is not it this is not gonna do it so you know I went back and you know I sat down and I thought to myself I was like okay I asked my question myself the question why do I want to run and that's how I came up with Impact SU. So Impact SU is really dear to my heart because it shows the new style of leadership I wanted to leave on this campus, letting people know that your SGA president is here for you day and night. He's going to do anything to make sure that you're okay. So Impact SU is basically I wanted to wake up every morning before I got to school and ask myself, how can I impact a life today? What can I do to change a student's life? And how can I make it better on this campus? And letting them know that Donald gave 110% no matter what. And he's going to go out his way to address my concerns always. And I transcended that throughout my whole administration. I told them at the retreat, you know, my SGA members, I said, you know, during this year, you should live and breathe Impact SU. You should do nothing other than that. Always wake up in the morning and ask yourself, before you come to school, how can I impact someone's life today? And I want all the students to know that, we're working for you. I tell anybody who asks me to do something, I work for you. You voted for me, but at the end of the day, I am here to make sure your voice is to be heard. So, Wow. <laughs> but you are the leader of, you know, big things that happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, homecoming is coming up. So homecoming is definitely coming up. How will that be? We, um, we are rolling out the week calendar this week so you all you guys are going to see all the events that's going on it's going to be a full pack week it's going to be a full pack week crank fest is going to kick it off comedy show fashion show is going to kick it off on the same exact day and i'm actually putting a spin on homecoming week this week i think this is the first time if i'm not mistaken there's going to be a party during homecoming week so stay tuned it's going to be real real fun so nah, you know we ain't got any big people coming <laughs> but then again, you were, you know, you created the first ever Late Night Pretty Wednesday. How did you feel yeah, about that? Yeah, um, I felt very, I was very proud. Proud and pleased, I think, are the two things that I were that night because I knew I did something special. I felt it. If, if you were there, you felt the magic in the air because it was something that had never been done before. Um, it was definitely a crowd I had never seen in front of the union before in my life. And a couple of people actually reached out to me, some alums actually, and said that was a really great idea, you know, to actually have something new. You know, I'm a big person on kind of 
moving out of the comfort zone of the university and doing things new and innovative. So I'm that type of person. And, you know, shout out to my to myself and my team who actually came together and, you know, created the idea of having a late night pretty Wednesday. Even though the students have been asking for it, I was kind of thinking like, let's do it, you know. And I, I'm a firm believer, you know, if you believe it, you could achieve it. So I knew that it could happen. So it was like, let's let's go for it. And we got really positive results from students were ex excited. They're ready for the next one. But I tell you, it'll be, it'll be a while before the next one comes back. So, you know, but we will do it again. It's, it's definitely in the near future. So. Well, I must say, you are doing your thing. Yeah, I appreciate it. I am it. super proud of you. I, like I said, I work for you. You work for me. <laughs> I work, <laughs> you for, work you. for me. And you just heard from the SGA president, Donald Dunbar. I'm Adriana Trussler with SD60. Until next time. Here I am in front of J.K. Haynes Hall, which is a school of nursing. Students have just been permitted to return back to class after having a week off due to a fire that occurred approximately one week ago. Here's Daniel Richard with an insight on how the fire started. Could you please explain to us what exactly were the damages in the building? So there was a fire on the second level in room 174. It caused the fire suppression system to engage and it, it caused water to travel through the second and first floor of the east wing of the building. Okay. Could you give maybe an estimated time of when you think the building will be repaired? Well, we're still developing our scope of work, doing some pre-testing for cleaning, but we expect that the cleanup, our portion of the claim, should be complete within one to two weeks. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for tuning in, Jaguars. We'll keep you updated. As a small part of Canvas, the dual enrollment program has seen a big jump in the number of high school students taking coursework in the program. Up to about 420 students from about 330 students, the program has seen a 126% jump in enrollment from 2018 to 2019. Dual enrollment has seen an uptick in popularity at not just Southern, but around the country as the cost of college has soared. For Southern's dual enrollment program, high school students can earn college credits for about $50 per credit hour. To put that in perspective, Students at Southern pay around $200 per credit hour, making the fourth of the cost of a regular student. President Chancellor Dr. Ray L. Belton has said he eventually wants there to be 20,000 students in the Southern University system. The dual enrollment program is one of the many programs that need to continue to improve in order for that vision to happen. Damon Jacobs. And I'm Kenny Glover, and this is the SU Survival Guide. Our topic is about headspace. It's an app for meditation, and you use five, you choose the top, different time periods five to two minutes. It can be really useful for college students. It sends a lot of useful little messages throughout your day. You can choose at what time you want these messages coming through, especially considering one in five college students suffer from a diagnosable mental disorder. So if you would like to help yourself out with that, you know, find a little time in between classes after you work out to meditate, try Headspace. Each year, new campus queens are elected as leaders for their class as representation for the university. This year's campus queens are devoted to enforcing that they are more than just a pretty face by using a different approach with the student body. Although all queens are working hard to impact the campus in different ways, this year's senior, Alacia Brew, now 89th Miss Southern University, is working in a different way by putting her leadership style into the works with all the queens. Overall, the students of Southern University have elected a phenomenal campus queens and can look forward to an impactful semester. In front of a record-breaking crowd of 27,191 in attendance at Bragg Memorial Stadium, the legendary rivalry between Southern University and Florida A&M was resurrected. Saturday was the first time the rivals have met on gridiron in seven years. The Jags defense seemed to be a few steps behind FAMU's high-octane offense in the first half, while Southern's offense couldn't quite get into a rhythm. The Jags gave up two safeties and a blocked PAT turned two-point conversion. Heading into halftime, the Rattlers were up 19-7. But the Jags came out of the locker room rejuvenated, and the third quarter Southern gained their rhythm on both sides of the ball. Ladarius Skelton's 23-yard pass to Jamar Washington seemed to be the momentum shifter. Southern down only five points. The score was 19-14. The Jags' eight-play 40-yard drive would result in a nine-yard rush by Ladarius Skelton. This drive would put Southern ahead for the first time with the score 21-19. But Southern's secondary couldn't contain the Rattlers' offense as Ryan Stanley's 17-yard touchdown pass to Xavier Smith would give Florida A&M the late lead and the final score of 27-21. Up to about four, 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 four,